Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 47. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews all the way in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How you doing? I'm doing great. How How about you? Good. How was the birthday weekend? It was great. I went to Branson. I was invited there to this band that gets together that really doesn't even have a name. They're just a a group. They play at different shows in Branson. And two of them were like guitarists of the year and a drummer of the year. So they were great. And they asked me to come up and sing with them. Oh, wow. Did you? (laughs) Yeah, I did. I sang Margaritaville. Oh, awesome. They chose the song for me. That's not the song I would have chosen. But it, it was great. Yeah, awesome. it, was, it was fun. That was, that was actually the first time I got up in front of people and sang, except, you know, since I've been an adult. Wow, that's great. So it, was, it was fun. Yeah, yeah awesome. I thought about you when I was doing it. I thought, oh boy, wouldn't kind of like to see that. Yeah, I was hoping there'd be some sort of video of that. I think there is, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to share. Okay. What are we talking about today, Grace? Well, we have got corruption. Ooh, more Deep of that. State corruption, the DOJ and the FBI specifically. It's interesting because, you know, every now and then I talk about this, I get a chance to write to a message to that supposedly the president does see, and we've had indication that at least somebody important sees it. Right. And the other day, I wrote about the corruption when I was given that opportunity. That was just two days ago. All right. Oddly enough, a whole bunch of information has came out over the weekend. Oh, good. Now, my suggestion to the president is if <laughs> that sounds funny, I know. But there's so many of these leftover Obama people right. that are definitely Obama sympathists. Right. And they have an agenda in mind. Our left and Trump is having trouble getting appointments because they're not doing the hearings. So there is something that he could use to his advantage is the recess appointment. We're coming up on the holidays. The House will be and the Senate will be in recess. Right. If I were him, I would make use of it. I'd have a long line of people to install as heads of these different agencies. I just go nuts. Yeah, it's almost like he needs to clean house. Don't know who's been tainted anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're they're against him. And it is amazing that he's getting done what he, you know, that he's having the successes he has. Yeah. Overnight, Friday night, they did pass through the Senate to move forward on the tax situation. That was huge. There was only one Republican dissension. That was Corker. And I think we expected Corker to be a dissension. But I tell you what, I thought there'd be a couple others. So we are moving forward. Good, good. But back to the corruption. I, Michael Goodwin wrote an opinion piece that was that is featured on Fox and will be on our, what do you call List it? List of sources. List of sources. And you usually take pictures of it. But the left and much of Washington are preparing to dance on the grave of Trump's presidency. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, not many years ago, and I remember this, an ad for a newspaper warned that if you miss a day, you miss a lot. (laughs) Now, you don't need to miss... You don't need to miss a day to miss a lot. Mere seconds of inattention can get you behind the curve. Yeah, what? No, don't. You didn't hear about the latest predator fall on his sword? No. The gusher of startling events puts us neck deep in the curse of interesting times. We are in the midst of cultural 
reckoning over sex, could be on the brink of nuclear war with North Korea, and may experience an economic boom as Congress moves closer to historic tax reform. And that pretty much sums up what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And I, I thought that was just a fabulous introduction by Michael Goodwin. And like I said, if you want to read more from him, we'll have that on our site. Yeah. Special counsel for the Russian probe, who is none other than Robert Mueller, fired an agent, one of his assistants. He fired him over anti-Trump texts he had sent. Hmm. He's a really a pro-Hillary bad boy. Yeah. He was also the investigator on the Hillary email investigation. In fact, he was the interviewer. Well, imagine that. If this isn't a conflict of interest, I don't know what one is. He was also having an affair with another attorney on the on the whole well, you know, on the Russian, Russian probe. probe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. This brings in lots of questions. He had given money to Hillary's campaign. He had even mentioned that they were going to go light on her. And wow. again, I stress, he was the one that questioned her back on the 4th of July. Right. Were there other people present? I don't know. But if there weren't, I mean, you know, God only knows how easy he was. Yeah. So it wow. brings up a lot of questions about those hired by Mueller. We know that at least 17 of them have had given significant money to the Hillary campaign. Wow. And what about what was going on with the FBI under Comey? Yeah, God only knows. I mean, it, it seems like it was an agency gone rogue. You, you've got both of them. Nevertheless, and most importantly, what about the Obama loyalists that are still in these in these agencies? Yeah. You know, well, and cr trying to curtail anything that Trump does. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. I think if he wants to move forward, he's got a clean house and just he does. start new. And this is what we refer to as the deep state. Yeah. I'm sure many people out there are familiar with James Rosen. He um, works for Fox News and he is brilliant. That's just all there is to it. He does do a lot of investigative journalism for Fox News, but in relation to deep-seated issues within the government. Right. So I have a report here from James Rosen, and he titles it, House Lawyer Urged Contempt citations against the DOJ, FBI over dossier stonewalling. Now, in an internal House memo obtained by Fox News, a senior counsel for the House Intelligence Committee urged Republican Chairman Devin Nunes three weeks ago to pursue a contempt of Congress citation against the Justice Department and the FBI. Huh. And if you ask me, very long overdue. This just gets ridiculous. Congressional investigators accuse those agencies of withholding key documents and an FBI witness that could shed light on whether U.S. officials under then-President Barack Obama relied on the infamous anti-Trump dossier to justify surveillance against associates of then-candidate Donald Trump. And we've been talking about this for a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, Noon says, we're trying to work with the DOJ and the FBI. We hope that they will comply, but if they don't, they leave us very little option, very few options. He said they sent the subpoenas out in June, July, and August, and they still haven't complied with them. Noon's added, so I think stonewalling would be putting it lightly. I think it says that you're a bunch of wusses. Wow. Are you Unreal. kidding me? Six months to turn over these documents, and they're going, well, this might be stonewalling? You do, do what you is think? wrong with these Republicans? What? I mean, how wussy are they? I drank a full glass of stupid that morning. Exactly. James Rosen says, and, and I love this, the dossier is the compendium of salacious and mostly unverified allegations about Trump and others on his campaign that was compiled last year by the opposition research firm Fusion GPS and based in part on Russian sourcing. Bank records obtained by the Noons panel, which I guess they got, those, revealed that the dossier was funded by the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, 
I that mean, they have let this go this long. And, and clearly, these people are not afraid of them. They're not afraid of a contempt citation. Obviously, or they would have complied by now. Exactly. In early January, Trump said it was a group of opponents that got together, six people, and they put that crap together. And you know what? Six months, everybody else finds out that what Trump said in the first place was the truth. Yeah. You know, they're always wanting to make him a liar. And most of the time, what he says is nutty as it sounds at the time. And sometimes I'm on board with that. It ends up being the truth. Yeah, as nutty as it sounds, it has been the truth. I mean, there was the wiretap. The, there was a lot of instances now when you think back of it where actually Trump sounded crazy, but he was actually telling the exactly. truth. Exactly. He was telling the truth. GOP lawmakers have spent eight months, including issuing a subpoena on August 24th, probing whether the FBI director, James Comey, and other officials who received the dossier in July 2016, used it to place surveillance on Trump associates. If they did, that is an abuse of power beyond belief. Yeah. Because the damn thing was fake. Back in March, Representative Castro, a Democrat from Texas, asked Comey if he was investigating the claims made in the dossier. Comey replied, I'm not going to comment on that, Mr. Castro. What do you think that means? Hmm. Now, that was before the dossier was officially called salacious and unverified. Right. I think he was using it, and I think he used it to get the FISA warrant. Yeah. And now, if, they, if they would have had anything on Trump at all, we would have seen it by now. Exactly. I mean, actually, we say they've been he's they've been doing researching this since he's been in office, but they were for a year before he got into office. They were yeah. trying to take him down. Okay, so now we move on to now. House Speaker Paul Ryan, the Republican from Wisconsin, who was briefed this week on the panel's probe, is said to be working behind the scenes to advance the case, following stern public comments last month. Yeah, they only do something if they get stern public comments. I mean, <laughs> why can't they just do something that's right? Yeah, exactly. He's said, we've had these document requests, this is from Ryan, with the administration, with the FBI in particular, for a long time, and they've been stonewalling. There's that stonewalling again. Yeah. You know, it, it's crazy. After eight months, Noon said, of ongoing verbal, written, and subpoena requests and engagement by committee and House leadership at the highest level, DOJ and FBI continues to impede the committee's legitimate investigative efforts and hinders the committee's ability to conduct effective oversight. Huh. So supposedly the counsel, the attorneys wrote, staff therefore recommends further com congressional compliance action. This is a phrase sources say is code for contempt citations. I don't even think they're afraid of that. I have to say that again. I don't think they're afraid of the contempt thing. Yeah, I think they think they're so far above the law that they don't have to. Of course. And of course, Trump tweeted about this. <laughs> <laughs> of course. From Trump himself, the House of Representatives seeks contempt citations against the Justice Department and the FBI for withholding key documents and an FBI witness, which could shed light on surveillance of associates of Donald Trump. Big stuff, deep state. Give the information now, he tweeted. <laughs> That was a good tweet for I a mean, change. I can't believe, actually, yeah, I agree with that. But I was under the understanding, at least from Tom Fenton, that the president could also subpoena or request these documents and have them handed over to him. Hmm. And I do wonder why Trump shies away from doing that. Does he think that makes him look more guilty? Or, I, I mean, I, I don't know what he thinks. I, to me, it's got to be something about the optics, or he would do it. Yeah, good one. I don't know. I good don't know question. Either. Good question. So, we will see how that ends up, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's it not never going away. ceases to amaze me how corrupt some of these agencies are and how much they are, they are Obama sympathists. Yeah. And Trump's been in office almost a year. Yeah, time to clean house. It is. Okay. How about ABC News? 
We discussed this Friday. We yeah. said that we didn't believe that, you know, first of all, we didn't believe that talking to Russians was breaking the law anyway. You right. know, what Flynn did was lie to the FBI. You know, I call it Martha Stewart syndrome. Right. You know, these morons have got to quit lying to the FBI because it doesn't matter if you said you had cereal for breakfast and you ate eggs. Yeah. And you're talking to the FBI, you know, don't get it wrong. Nevertheless, ABC suspended Brian Ross for four weeks without pay for comments he made Friday in the wake of the Flynn guilty plea. I'm paraphrasing here. Ross said that the candidate Trump had told Flynn to contact the Russians and that this revelation was treasonous and would surely lead to impeachment proceedings. Again, Basically, we shared on Friday, he's saying that talking to the Russians was treasonous. Yeah, exactly. Well, that can't be treasonous. You know, that's ridiculous. But what happened was the market took it seriously. And the market started selling off. And there was a movement of more more than 350 points. Now, the sell-off, you know, regained the market shares after they, I don't know, they aired a retraction, but those people that took, sold off stocks during that amount of time lost money. Hmm. There's there's no doubt about yeah. it. Now, my opinion is if you're going to knee jerk that bad, you shouldn't have your money in the market. You need to buy gold or something. You know, you're too, you're too squimish for the market. Right. But President Trump suggests those with losses should sue ABC. <laughs> now, I think that's a little ridiculous because you set a dangerous precedent. There. Yeah. Very dangerous because if you start suing news people for the market selling off, oh boy, that could be really bad. Nevertheless, should the FCC find them? Very interesting because, you know, we could hire a writer to put out some fake news. Exactly. And when the stock market tanks, we could invest 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 and make a killing by the end of the day well maybe Very that's what brian ross did because he doesn't seem to be that upset about missing a month's pay in a twitter <laughs> a twitter statement on saturday brian ross wrote my job is to hold people accountable and that's why i agree with being held accountable myself you're right maybe he made some money off the stock market or got paid to put out the fake news one of the two i don't know should be never that's- know That's my little conspiracy theory. Absolutely. Okay, word about sports gambling. Mm. This is an interesting case that the Supreme Court is hearing today. You know, it does involve New Jersey Gambling Commission. They're supposed to hear from Governor Christie. But the Supreme Court is listening to the arguments that could make sports gambling legal in all states. Hmm. Now, currently, the government loses a lot in uncollected tax dollars from illegal sports gambling. This has been going on for years, probably since the inception of sports. It is believed to be a considerable factor for the justice to consider. The American Gaming Association estimates Americans wager $150 billion a year on sports. Wow. Now, you would think that considering the fact that, especially the NFL, viewership is going down. I mean, in a lot of cases, their TV ratings are down 20 and 30 percent. The same for some of the stadiums over this kneeling thing. You would think, wow, they would want this because more people might gamble and they want to watch this. If they got some money invested, they want to watch the games, right? Right. Oh, no. (laughs) No. That is not the stand they take. The pro teams are against the legal gambling Gambling. and legislation, believing it will damage the integrity of the sport. Because they have so much. Wow. Yeah, if that's not hypocrisy, I don't know what is. Wow. (laughs) That is funny. Crack me up. That is funny. Well, in Canada, oh in Canada, we can bet on sports teams through our lottery. So Yeah, what a great idea. And you guys probably make a lot of money off of that. Yeah, and a lot of money goes back into sports from our lotto and other charities. So, so does the state or the government own the sports teams? No. No, no they just no. finance them? Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm not sure if the team actually gets anything from gambling. I doubt they do. Or the arenas 
Sometimes, yeah. you know, they get, they do. In states, the government puts money into the facilities, which is another well, argument. Yeah, and that, that's sometimes, <laughs> yeah, that's, I For mean. For another day. <laughs> it, yeah, they're, that's going on in the city here as well. They're talking about bringing in a WHL team, or they were, and uh, yeah, it's a. It's a mess. And, it, you know, NFL is not the only sport that's suffering. All the, the sports are suffering. Watch a hockey game and, and just look at how many empty seats are in the arenas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it is. Um, people are changing. Well, it's not. I don't think that they're changing so much as people can't afford to go to a game anymore. Oh, it's a ridiculous. It's an expenditure. I mean, it's like a full vacation to go one day to a game if you've got a couple of kids. Yeah. I mean, last time I went, I don't even drink beer. Beer was 12 bucks. Yeah. Oh, same here. Yeah. Are it's, you kidding uh, me? Do you know how much beer you can buy for 12 bucks at the or, grocery store? Or a ten dollar mm-hmm. hot dog? Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. I can make I can feed a lot of people hot dogs for ten bucks. You know? Well, it is crazy. That's another story for another day, as crazy yeah. as <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. I mean, what a phenomenon. Yeah. This this thing just makes me a little crazy thinking about it. Yeah, it's going Okay, crazy. it's a cryptocurrency. Today the twins that once sued Zuckerberg over stealing their idea called Facebook became billionaires. Hmm. Billionaire yeah. uh, Bitcoin was started by the Winkle Voss twins with eleven million dollars of their sixty-three million that they were awarded from the Zuckerberg suit. I mean, the court hmm. somewhat agreed with them that Zuckerberg had stolen some of their intellectual property, meaning Facebook. Right. Nevertheless, the worldwide payment system seems terribly volatile to me. I know you know a lot more about it, um, but perhaps, you know, I just don't understand it. Now, today, it is at about 11.2, a little more than that. Yeah, it's gone skyward. That is definitely for sure. A lot of it could be attributed to Zimbabwe and possibly Venezuela. Now that they've got some political unrest in those countries, they've kind of went into Bitcoin to save what currency they do have left. So I think. So you put it like out there in the cloud somewhere. It's all I mean, virtual. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just reminds me so much of Uber. Where you're buying this stock. I mean, and I'm talking about it not from the company standpoint so much as when you're buying a stock. I always like to think I'm buying a piece of something physical. Yeah. But lately case, we're buying yeah. ideas. Like Uber, they didn't own the cars. They didn't own the drivers. They really didn't even have a big brick and mortar presence like a big office building. Yeah. They, so no assets, That's just a good idea. That's kind of the Bitcoin yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, a lot of people, the financial analysts especially, have been, you know, saying that it's going to go away. It's uh, and it hasn't. It's stronger yeah. now than it's it ever been has four been. Four years now. Yeah. So I and don't know, the maybe brothers there's something are not to it. taking any money out of it. They just keep reinvesting it back into the Bitcoin. Right. as the company so i'm skeptical i think it's volatile i'd buy anything else in the world but that's just because like i said before i'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer i don't get it yeah well it's not the time to buy it now no it's too high now isn't yeah. it ridiculous but stocks the stock market is so much fun this year <laughs> you know i mean it it's it's about 24 4 today i'm predicting it has 27 by the end of the year wow I mean, we are sure if these tax things keep going the way they are, these this tax bill and everybody plays nicely together in the sandbox, right. a Santa rally will take us over the top. In fact, 27 might not be high enough. And if you think about how high the stock market is now, you know, coming up another couple of thousand percentage-wise isn't that much. I mean, it's a lot less than it is when you're down at 12 yeah, or 15. Yeah, exactly. Or when he was elected, we were at 18. Wow. Think of that. It's it's exciting. There are people that worry that this is the beginning of the end because they saw that volatility Friday when that ABC report went out. But my guess is that it is just the opposite. Yeah. 
Wow, cool. Let's talk a little news here. All right. Okay, a record-breaking rainbow in Taiwan lasted for nine hours. Is that crazy? I've never, ever seen a rainbow more than maybe half an hour. So how does I it... agree. I, I don't That's even know nuts. how that logistically works. I don't know how it can maintain because it almost had to be reforming or something. Yeah, because I don't know. it would go away or or is it like time stopped yeah i don't know i mean groundhog day i don't know what it was but interesting okay everybody's moving out of illinois at least it seems that way there's a huge exodus from illinois people are moving in 2015 alone the state lost 4.75 billion in adjusted gross income on taxes on top of that, people took, moved out of the state with $11.1 billion in assets. They took it to other states. It's a, the crime rate's high. It is corrupt. They are out of money. They sometimes can't pay their lottery winners. They sometimes wow. can't pay employees. It is a highly taxed state. Oh. They border on Tennessee, who, who is a very low tax right-to-work state. They're losing a lot of people to Tennessee, just like we are here in Missouri. Hmm. St. Louis has absolutely changed because of blue collar jobs that have moved. The companies have moved to Tennessee to operate A lot more cheaply. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, no idea that was happening. Yeah. Okay. The Detroit Lions. Former home in Michigan, the Silver Dome, had a failure on an implosion. <laughs> right. They I were seen due that. to implode at 8.30 yesterday morning. They stood up. And I'm always excited about these implosions because the Rolla School of Mines is a couple of hours from me. And that is the school. One of the projects they do is they do the implosions. They uh, are the company. They go all over the world. And they, you know, they have it down to mathematics. Well, somehow... The mathematics failed or the silver dome was one hell of a structure because after the smoke cleared, the silver dome was still standing. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, too funny. But yeah. our truckers are upset today. Oh? We never want our truckers upset because we want our stuff, you know? Yeah, they make the world go round. Yeah, they're upset because these ELDS, which are uh, electronic logging devices, they will have to have in their trucks by sometimes towards the end of the month. They say are supposed to make it safer on the road, but it will not. Hmm. Because when they log out, they or when they stop, it doesn't stop running the time. Right. In other words, they are forbidden to drive more than 11 hours in a 14-hour shift. Right. So right. if they stop to take a break, they're logged like they're driving, even when they're unloading. So what they they claim, in effect, that they will stop stopping in that 11 hours huh. and will become more tired, irritated, have to go to the bathroom. I don't know what else. Well, that's anyway, exactly opposite of what it, it was supposed to do. I Yeah, I understand what they're saying. I really do. And believe me, I live right on I-44 and it, I don't want it to be more unsafe. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. Crazy. Okay, this is nuts too. A mother turned in her 18-year-old son for molestation. He told his mom he had molested more than 50 kids as young as four years old. He claimed that he had begun molesting at the age of 10. The cops that the, mo the mother called, the cops that picked this kid up and I guess he just started talking, you know, like he had to his mother. They said it will take them a lot of time to get over this. I mean, if wow. they ever do. The cops said it was so graphic, so gross, so horrifying. And all these kids out there that some of them are nameless. It, 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 trauma, crazy, sick kid. Yeah, he needs help. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's wow. amazing. Okay, ex-congresswoman from Florida, Corinne. Brown was sentenced on Friday to five years for a charity scam. She was convicted of mail, wire, and tax fraud. These donations she had collected were meant to be used for poor children. Oh, wow. And she used these donations for lavish parties and trips. What a piece of I mean. Yeah. Okay. Time Magazine's shortlist for Person of the Year includes Trump and a few of his closest friends. 
I'm being facetious. <laughs> President Trump, Colin Kaepernick, Kim Jong Un, and Robert Mueller. Wow, that's quite the list. Yeah. Now let me remind you that this is probably the last year that time is going to be so liberal because the Koch <laughs> brothers have oh, just pur yeah. purchased them. So how they, who they choose here may have a lot to do with their future. Right. Uh, I see where you're going there. Uh, yeah. What a lousy list. Yeah, first of all, yeah, it's hard for me to think. I mean, Mueller's not done much yet. And Kaepernick, he doesn't do much. He can't even stand up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Kim Jong-un certainly influenced some of our behavior around the world, but it really would be but hard person to of the person stuff. of the year, really? Well, time does claim it, it doesn't have to be an influence. They don't have to be influential in a positive way. So I, I, I you know. agree with that. I, 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 my guess, I, I just have a feeling they're going to go with Kim Jong-un. But in recent days, this this worshiping of Colin Kaepernick has just oh. got me wondering. Should Kim Jong-un be the person of the year or the whole of the year? <laughs> Well, if they had that award, it certainly would be hmm. that. I just want to remind everyone that if they don't get a new budget passed by Friday, government will go on shutdown. I don't even know how that happens. Yeah, well, it, they really don't shut down essentials, but still, it's a pain. Nobody comes out looking good. They really need to pass the budget. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I think they will. Yeah, well, or they'll do the wussy thing they usually do, and they'll extend it till March. <laughs> And I have to sure. go through it again. Yeah. Well, we didn't make I, this I deadline. Let's just move it. Two or three years. Yeah. That's what they tend to do. So I am really suspecting that now because what's on the line for the Dems is DACA. They're saying they will not support a budget unless Trump releases, freeze, whatever you want to call the DACA recipients. Right. And Trump, although he is very much in the camp of the DACA kids, right. I, I think he wants to. He he looks at it as a bargaining chip and he's not going to let it go without a trade-off and yeah. i don't blame him yeah me the either. art of the deal yeah okay now everybody's reporting that president trump has support come out in support of judge roy moore he has endorsed him i don't think he's really endorsed them president trump urged voters to vote for judge roy moore claiming the GOP just needs to seat. The guys could be a nasty jerk, but if the GOP doesn't get the seat, it will really hurt them because there are these dissidents. Right. You know, now on the tax bill the other night, Corker was the only dissident. But we have others that, you know, sway a little named. back and forth. They, yeah. they play both sides of the third bubble agents. There's sometimes dims on the Republican side. Yes. So... Okay, this is big news, and I'd love to know who it is, but I'm sorry to say I don't. A woman who settled with Bill O'Reilly and Fox News is suing again for defamation and breach of contract, saying their statements after the settlement violated the settlement's agreement and made her seem like a liar and an extortionist. Wow. I think she's probably got a point. She'll get some more money out of them. Might as well top up that bank account. That's right. It's probably been a couple of years. Probably mm -hmm. running out of funds. Could be. Nevertheless, a North Korean defector claims people in North Korea are sick and dying of mysterious diseases. She claimed... So many people died, we began calling it ghost disease. We thought we were dying because we were poor and we ate badly. Now we know it was the radiation. These deaths began in 2010 in the northern part of North Korea. Wow. And that was from two bombs tested by Kim Jong-il, which was Kim Jong-un's father. Right. Yeah. Since then, since those two nukes, Kim Jong-un has tested four. How bad do you think these people are getting sick? Wow. And I, I can't stress enough the fact that uh, you brought it up the other day about the parasites, the tapeworms. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the defectors are, these people are, it's just unimaginable. Yeah. I can't imagine what it's like to live in a place like that. The the weird is just over the top. It is. And, I mean, God only knows what they eat just to stay alive. I mean, yeah. it's... <laughs> 
Yeah. Or, and I hate to end on such a terrible note, so I will say, I hope everybody got to see the super moon last night. I Very did. beautiful. Oh, my yeah. God. So clear. So beautiful. Yeah, it looked exactly like a full moon to me. And we're going to have another one on New Year's Eve. Oh, cool. New Year's Eve and full moon. Oh, yeah, that could be kind of scary. On the 31st, I believe it is, of January, the 30th or the 31st, and it will be supposedly the best of the three. Huh. Okay. So, very interesting. Well, being that it's winter, we probably won't see it. So That's true. You'll probably be cloudy. Well, I would agree with that. Yeah, and we don't always agree, but life's a journey, and we're all in this together. Remember, do not become a victim. Hashtag nobody's victim. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Garner. And Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace. Thanks for listening, everybody. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins.